Hello everyone, this is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. Today's Analyze Out Loud video is on part 15 of my series where I'll be covering about actually 19 of the 20 sectors produced by FactSet. And this particular one is on the producer manufacturing sector. And one of the underlying themes I'm doing here is attempting to point out that stocks are really different and you really shouldn't be too general in your thinking about them. But by the way, if you like these videos before I go on and you find them of value, please click the subscribe button below. We'd love to have you be able to have access to all our videos going forward. And we thank all of you who are already are subscribers. Anyway, I'm going to start with the company Acuity Brands. It's an electrical products manufacturer and there's some very interesting aspects of this graph that I want you to understand. One of my things that I talked about quite a bit in the article was that stock prices or operating results are more important than stock prices. So if I take price off of this graph, I want you to notice this is the earnings per share, operating earnings, adjusted operating earnings per share of Acuity Brands. And then when I put price on here, I want you to notice the price tracks earnings. And then we had this, what looks to be like a very excessive valuation for these years. But I want to point something out. Earnings growth rates have a lot to do with what happens to valuations. I want you to notice how the earnings turned up here. If you look at the bottom of the graph, you see some very high numbers, 16%, 24% growth, 10% growth, in 2013, 20, 36, 45. You've got a calculated fair value PE ratio of 15. That's what the PE of this orange line is. However, if I use my scroll bar here and I take out some of these earlier years and I kind of just focus on the years 2011 where we have these high growth rates I pointed out, you see that the growth rate now has moved up to 16.7%. The other side is if I scroll out some of these forecasts and scroll out some of these lower growth rates that you see right here on the graph, if I scroll those out, then this period of time where the stock price looked like it was way overvalued, now we're, it, it was a time when the company grew by almost 25% a year. So here the fair value PE is around 25. And although the stock still looks overvalued, it doesn't look as overvalued. As I start adding in some of these lower growth years, this growth rate starts to drop and you start seeing the growth rates you know, getting lower and lower and then the stock price kind of reverts to the mean. If I bring out these last few growth years here and just look at the last couple of years, we're now down to about a 7.5 to 8% growth rate. And when I go to forecasting, you'll see that the estimates going forward by 11 analysts are for about 8.5% growth, which means the stock doesn't look really undervalued here. Now it looks fairly valued. Decent returns, you know, 9 to 10% returns going forward with this company based on that. If we use the normal multiple graph here, of that 28 multiple we saw earlier, then it looks really undervalued again. But once again, those were pretty high multiples that you can see the companies historically gathered. So you always have to make your judgments, but you really need to analyze what you're looking at when you're looking at these graphs. Anyway, I do think the other story here is that we saw some really high valuation, and then we saw the reversion to the mean as the price came back into alignment, not only with earnings growth as calculated by this 15 PE, but what growth expectations would be going forward. Now I'm doing these in alphabetic order, so my next research candidate is Borg Warner. And once again, one, one thing I really want to continuously focus you on is how the operating results of the company, the orange line, really is and are the drivers of what the stock price does in the long run. Now, there'll be times when the market gets overly exuberant. There'll be times when the market gets really overly pessimistic. You know, high valuation here, low valuation here. But you constantly see this reversion to the mean. Overvaluation goes back to fair value. Undervaluation goes back to fair value. And when I'm looking at a graph like this, I see an expectation for a down year this year and negative 5% earnings growth. So clearly that's impacted people's idea about this company over the last you know, year or so. And we see this big drop in stock price. You know, if I shorten the graph a little bit, you can see that they're reacting to what looks to be like a down year here. Now looking forward on this stock, looking at it from a normal PE of 15, this stock would be extremely attractive at these values with about a 1.5% dividend yield. This would be a total return investment. I want you to notice Borg Warner has a pretty good analyst scorecard. 
because when you look at its historical record over the long run, it does have cyclicality. It did have some trouble during the recession, and it, it had trouble in the 2001 recession. And occasionally we get these down years, but on the other hand, we have really nice growth here. So if I look at long-term performance of this stock, you'll notice that the, the long-term performance is kind of consistent with the company's growth, even though it's undervalued today. And in this case, since November 30th of 99, the company dramatically outperformed the S&P 500. So let's move on to the next company and see what lesson we can learn. Cummins Inc. is the diesel manufacturer. And again, you see this, this high correlation between price and earnings. What the business does and how the business performs, performs is so much more important than short-term stock prices. And what I really mean by that is when you have a, a perspective like this where you're seeing the fundamentals of the business value correlated with the, the stock price, you can really clearly see times when the price is overvalued and when it's undervalued. What makes it a little tricky with stocks that have cyclicality like Cummins does is you got to make sure that you know the cycle is not going to last too long. But in this case, we have short down cycles followed by, I'm going to say moderate to short up cycles. Well, up cycles tend to be a little longer, but once again, the price tracks earnings and the performance performance ends up outperforming the market by a pretty good margin over this time frame again. And I believe that's 100% related to the fact that the company's earnings growth and their dividend have both increased over time. I'm only going to cover six companies here, so let's move on to keep this video re reasonably short for you. My next company here is Eaton Corp, very similar to what we saw with Cummins. You see the fact that the price tracks earnings. You see, you know, when the earnings are rising, the price follows it. The price is always a jagged line, but ultimately the price goes where the earnings go. We see a down year, you know, a downward movement in stock price during the Great Recession, which also saw a downward movement in earnings. Then earnings grew again. The price tracked that. We saw some weakening earnings here, and the price got weak. And then we've had earnings growth happen again and going forward looking at this stock you know it's expected to grow at about eight percent a year at its current valuation this would give us double digit returns we have a nice 3.4 percent dividend yield the company's a minus rated has what i'll call very low debt 28 percent debt i think this would be an excellent time not not as good as when it was undervalued like it was here but a really good time. By the way, I'm going to add another valuation reference here that I was talking about with a with a with a uh, subscriber today. This dividend line shows dividend yields, or average dividend yields, and what you'll see here. What I want you to notice is when the dividend yield is highest, and I'm going to get rid of that really aberrant line here. When the dividend yield is highest, is during times when the valuation is lowest. So when you see a 3.4 percent dividend yield here, it was 3.8 at the end of last year, and that's when the Price was down here. It's still 3.4. These are, you know, this is within range of what I would call anything above 3% on this company would probably give you a good, you know, idea that the stock is reasonably valued. Again, not greatly undervalued here, but reasonably valued. My next research candidate is Fortune Brands. And this is a very interesting one because, again, I want you to see the importance, not just the fact that price goes where earnings go, but I also want you to see the growth rate of earnings has a big impact. Here we've got the orange line written as the P equals growth rate, or what we call the PE equals G growth. So this PE is 25.2, which is the growth rate. But again, the devil's in the details. Look at the bottom, 57% growth, 53, 69, 16, 19, 33, 12, and 8. So as I start to scroll some of these big numbers out of this graph, the growth rate then drops to 14%, and we get a totally different perspective of valuation. I take some more years out, and I'm starting to add in these single-digit years. Now we're down to about a 9.8%. And if I scroll one more out, where we've only got really one year of history and then the forecast, we're down to about a 9% growth rate. And then I look at forecasting. That's reasonably consistent with what analysts are expecting going forward. So an 8 or 9% growth rate would mean that this stock could generate 13, 14, 12 percent, you know, rates of return over the next one, two, three years. It's a you know very attractive company. Triple B plus pays a 1.8 percent dividend, which is not real high, but it does offer the opportunity to get some decent growth. So this is one you might want to take a look at. And then finally, last but not least, I want to take a look at Lear Corporation. And I chose this example as well because if you, I'm going to start with the forecasting graphs here. You know, it's forecast to grow at about 10 percent. The company's normal multiple 
multiple is a PE of about 11 over the last five years. If you look at it, a 9, 10, 8, 9, 10. So I can even use the lowest PE ratio here that the company has traded at this 8.6. And you can see now I've turned that blue line into a 8.6 PE ratio. And we still see rates of return here that would be attractive. If the company went to a you know, a higher, a more normal, or, or even a fair value PE of 15, you could see the rates of return here would be astronomical. But let's look at the historical graph here for a moment and, and look at how you got to be careful when you're analyzing stocks. Notice this very high growth rate. This company went public, you know, in 2009. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to get rid of that anomalous growth rate there. And I want to look at this company from a standpoint of what its growth has been more recently. And then I'm going to add the normal PE here of 10. So this company's grown still at 15 or 16 percent a year, but the market values this somewhere around the 10 PE. So when I'm looking at forecasting and looking at normal multiples. You know, I have the 8.6 picked here, but I can also pick that 10 PE I talked about. And somewhere between an 8 and 10 PE is probably rational. The company has a very good analyst scorecard. It's not perfect, but it's very good. So this would give you double digit rates of return. But to end this video, the couple points I want to make is you can see how different each of these companies are, even though they're all operating in the same industry, but they have different businesses. Remember, it's a market of stocks, not a stock market. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carmel saying thanks for watching. Be talking to you again soon.